Hi guys, welcome back to the session. Today we will take a look at some of the very important automation anywhere interview questions. This video will help you not only in interview preparation but also to enhance your knowledge in automation anywhere A2019. So let's get started with our first question where a business process is given to open a website in a browser and perform some clicks on the website. Now to automate this business process, bot developer used A2019 recorder and has done the recording on Chrome browser. But the bot runs on Internet Explorer. So what could be the reason of this conflict? So the bot developer has done the recording on Chrome browser, but the bot runs on Internet Explorer. What is the reason of this conflict? So such conflicts occur when default browser is chosen from the browser list of browser open action. So if you are aware of this browser open action, there is a browser list provided which includes default browser, Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge. So if you have chosen default browser, then the default browser option will run the bot on the default browser of the system. So if the bot developer has done the recording on Chrome browser and the default browser of your system, default browser of the bot developer system is Internet Explorer and he has chosen this default browser from the drop down, then this conflict will occur. So this is the answer of this question. And there could also be a follow up question here that is what browsers are supported by Automation Anywhere A2019. So the Automation Anywhere A2019 supports the browser Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox and Microsoft Edge. Now moving to the next question where another business process is given to extract employee ID from employee ID cards and store those employee IDs in a file. These employee ID cards are scanned PDFs. Then upload the employee ID card in PNG format on a web portal. So what all actions from Automation Anywhere will be used by the bot developer to automate this process? Now, first of all, since there are multiple employee ID cards, first of all, we are going to add loop action with for each file in folder to work with all the employee ID card files. Now we are going to open the employee ID card which is a scanned PDF using the file open action. Now once the file is opened we require to extract the employee IDs for which we are going to use the OCR capture window action which is going to extract employee ID and assign to string variable. Now once the employee ID is extracted and assigned to string variable, we can simply write those string variable into the file. Now with this our first step is over, we extracted employee ID and stored them in a file. Now if you are working on Automation Anywhere A2019, you must be aware of this OCR package. This is one of the most commonly used package in A2019 which enables you to extract text from images, PDFs or other applications. So you can refer to my previous video to get a quick reference on this OCR package. Let me show you. So in this video, I have shown how to capture text from image or PDF files using the OCR package. So you can check out this video for a quick reference. Now moving ahead. So step one is done. Now to upload the employee ID card in PNG format on a web portal, we are going to use PDF extract image action, which is going to convert the employee ID cards from PDF to PNG file. This also I have shown in one of my previous videos. I'll share the link in the description and you can check out that video. And once the PDF is converted to PNG file, then you can use recorder capture action to upload those files on a web portal. So that's about this third question. Now moving ahead, there could also be a follow up question with this question as well. So if you have provided all these answers correct, it, you could be asked some follow up questions such as since there are multiple files, multiple employee ID cards, how will you store the file names in loop action? So how are you going to store the file names in loop action? So in the loop action, we are going to use dictionary variable, which is going to store the files. So the 
dictionary variable stores the data as a key value pair so in this case the key for to store the file name will be name and the key to store the extension of the file will be extension so i'll show you in few minutes that let's see the next follow up question what file name will you provide in the file open action so let me show you this one in automation anywhere so this is the bot which we created in the ocr packet session so here you see we have used the loop action loop for each file in folder where we have stored the output to a dictionary variable called file and it while opening those files we have again used that dictionary variable with the file name as dictionary variable and the key as name which stores the file name and the extension key stores the extension of the file so in this way you can open multiple of files one by one inside the loop now moving ahead to our next question so in our next question a string is provided that is email id of new employee is john.smith@gmail.com so the question here is how will you change this email id to something else that is smith.john211@gmail.com so how are you going to change this email id so for this we are going to use the string replace action this replace action is a combination of find and replace it finds a string and replaces it with another string so in this case we are going to use the replace action under the string package also if you are not aware of exact find string whatever you need to find you if you are aware of only the pattern in such case it's always a best practice to use regular expressions to find string now the string manipulations are very useful very commonly used in real time projects and automation anywhere a2019 has provided a rich source of string manipulation in a2019 so let me show you this one as well in automation anywhere so here if i search for the string package so here you see inside the string package we have multiple of actions present we can reverse the string we can replace the string we can find any specific string we can extract the text so these all are very helpful in our real time projects which we have already learned in our string operation session you can also check out this video to know about several string operations which we did in a2019 also using the regular expressions now moving to our questions so in this question a business process is provided to launch url and fill the input form here bot runner notices that bot gets fail as it tries to fill the input form before it is completely launched so what modification is required in the bot to make it error free now to automate this business process what you are going to do you will add some actions to launch url and you will add some actions to fill the input form now since the issue here is bot is getting failed as it tries to fill input form before it is completely launched so in between these actions we are going to use the wait for window to open action this action is going to wait for this input form window to open and once the window is open then only it's going to fill the form and hence we won't see any error in the bot so this is the answer of this question and there could be a follow up question for this question as well what is the difference between wait and delay packages of automation anywhere a2019 so this is also one of the very frequently asked question in the interview since these two packages look similar so what all are the differences in between wait and delay package let me show you so in the delay package delay package performs a delay action by providing a regular or random delay in seconds or milliseconds so if you are using the delay action from the delay package you'll have to provide delay in seconds or milliseconds whereas in the wait package the wait package provides actions to perform wait operations here you don't require to provide the delay in seconds or milliseconds here we perform the wait operations such as wait for some condition wait for screen change or wait for window to open or close 
So these are the differences between the delay and wait package. So now moving to the next question. So in the next question, multiple run status of bot is provided. In run one, error is received as error received cannot find the window or application title titled Google Chrome movie search and some alphanumeric value. Then in run two again, error received cannot find the window or title Google Chrome movie search with another alphanumeric value. And in the run three as well, error is received with this message cannot find the window or application title Google Chrome movie search and some alphanumeric value. So the question here is how will you resolve such error in automation anywhere? So multiple times you run the bot, you receive multiple errors. So how are you going to handle these errors? Now, if you notice here carefully, everything is same in the error. This alphanumeric value is getting changed. That means the title of this Google Chrome movie search window is getting changed every time. That means this title of the window is dynamic in nature. So how are you going to handle these conditions? So in this case, we are going to replace these dynamic characters with wildcard in the window title of recorder capture action. So of course you are going to use the recorder capture action for the automation of any website inside the Chrome browser. The only thing is since the title of the window is getting changed, you'll have to replace these dynamic characters with the wildcard in the recorder capture action. And I have used this capture action in many of my real time project videos where I have done the DOM XPath manipulations as well. You can check out those videos as well for a quick reference. Now moving to the next question. So this is a very straightforward question. The interviewer wants to know your approach for bot development, but the answer which you will provide will really matter a lot. So prepare well for providing the answer to this question. So here the question is the business process to be automated is very complex with lot of functionalities along with several configuration details. So what will be your approach for bot development? So in this case, you are going to provide the answer that you are going to build modular bots where you will build different child bots for different functionalities and these child bots will be called by the parent bot. Also, since there are several configuration details, so you are going to use configuration file to store the configuration details. Now here in the modular bot, there could be a multiple of follow up questions. Let me show you, then I'll show you in the bot also. So the questions could be, if you developed a modular bot, what variable type in the task bot run action will fetch the values from the child bots? So in this case, the variable used in the run action is a dictionary variable. The dictionary variable is going to fetch the values from the child bot. Also, what option has to be marked while creating the variable in child bot whose values will come from the parent bot? So if the values are coming from the parent bot, so the variable should be marked as an input variable in the child bot. Whereas if the values of the variables are going out from child bot to parent bot, so in such case, those variables will be marked as an output variable in the child bot. So let me quickly show you the modular bots which we have created in our modular bot session. So this is the parent bot which we created and there could be multiple child bots here. So here the parent bot is a calculator and there could be multiple child bots such as addition, subtraction and so on. So here if you see this is the run action from the task, book, task bot package. Here you see we have used the dictionary variable which is going to fetch the values from the child bot. Also in the child bot, the values which are coming from parent bot such as v1 and v2, these are marked as input variable. Whereas the value which is going out to child bot, let me show you. So this is the value which is going out from child bot to parent bot. So we have marked this value, this variable as an output variable. So in this way, we can work on modular bots. These are very helpful if you have a very big and complex project. And you can check out this video on modular bots for a quick reference. 
Also to know how to work with configuration files, how to store the configuration data in a configuration file, please check out this video as well where we have used the XML package. Now moving to our questions. Now after you provided the answers on modular bots and the configuration file, the interviewer could ask you some other questions on your approach of bot development. So the question could be, the business process has some sensitive data such as username, password. How will you work with such sensitive data in the bot? So in cases where you have sensitive data, you are going to use the concept of credentials and lockers. So here you are going to create a credential and add the required attributes such as username and password. Now once you have a credential, you are going to create a locker to group the similar credentials together. Now once you have both the credential and locker, you are going to pick up the created locker, credential and the attribute in the task board wherever you require to use those sensitive data. Now this credential and locker concept also I have covered in one of my video. You can check out that video for a quick reference and this is also one of the very important topic of Automation Anywhere A2019. This is a very good feature of the Automation Anywhere. Now moving to our next question, this is also related to the credential. So here it says a credential with standard type attribute that is user email and user password has been created and placed inside the locker. Now a locker participant tries to run the bot with these credentials but could not. So what could be the reason? So here the reason is why the locker participant tries to run the bot with these credentials but it is not able to do so because the locker participant do not have permission to use credentials when running a bot. So there are different rules and permissions provided inside the locker of Automation Anywhere based on which it works. So let me show you this one in Automation Anywhere. So here let me move to the credentials and this is the credentials tab and this is the locker tab. So if I open one of the locker and here you see there are different roles provided that is owners, managers, participants and consumers. Each role has different responsibilities. So here if you notice the participant here it clearly says that they will not be able to use their credentials when running a bot unless they are also a locker consumer. So this locker participant won't be able to use these credentials when running a bot. Whereas if you see the consumer, these consumers have been provided to additional permissions that is they will be able to input their information in user provided credentials with user provided attributes and they will be able to use credentials in this locker when running a bot. So while running a bot these consumers can use the credentials but the participants can't use the credentials while running the bot. This is how the roles and permissions are set for a locker and you can check out my previous video on credentials and lockers where I have explained how to create credentials and locker in detail. So that's all for this session guys. In the next session I'm going to cover some of the other important interview questions and also you can check out this playlist. This playlist is going to be very helpful for you in your interview preparation. And that's all for this session guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did give it a like and share with your friends. Hit the bell button to get the updates on the latest videos. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel as well and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye bye.